Hello everyone. Uh, last time we learned how to run like simple 1D um, NMR experiments. And on this video, I'm going to teach you how to run simple experiments where you want to suppress a, uh, the signal over your solvent. The most common one is when you're running like samples that has a lot of water, like 9% water, 10% D2O or 5% D2O. So um, what the first question is, uh, what kind of experiments um, can I run? I mean, what kind of pulse sequence? So there are several pulse sequence that use um, that you can use to do water suppression or solvent suppression. Um, each one has its uh, particularity, so you got to be like um, careful about this. So um, today, what I'm going to show you is like um, how to um, how to run two simple experiments. Like um, one of them is um, is ZGPR, it's water uh, or pre-sat or pre-saturation is an experiment where during the recover um, delay during, during D1, you apply a constant, um, constant uh, continuous wave, sorry. Um, so this is called ZGPR. So I'm gonna, Take this pulse sequence, for example, I'm gonna create an experiment too because I created one that is the, the next pulse sequence that I'm gonna show you, the ZGESHP. So let's go for, uh, let's see if we find ZGPR and there are variations of ZGPR. There's like the simple one, the simplest one that's ZGPR and the ZGPR with gradient pulses as well. So, so okay, so we loaded this pulse sequence and uh, this is a really, really simple one. So during uh, D1 here, you have the, um, we have the continuous wave uh, and then a, a pulse and detection. So what I have to do, so see that I have like PL9. Uh, so when I, how do I, uh, so I'm gonna run get the result that we learned from the last video. I'm gonna calculate the pulse, right? I uh, I did everything as be on the on the on the last video. Like I created my folder. Uh, I did um, match and tune. Um, so my my probe is matched and tuned for hydrogen because I'm just running hydrogen. Um, and I uh, did option, and now I am uh, gonna calculate the pulse. Um, so yeah, my pulse is nine forty five. So this is uh, the power uh, for water suppression, PLW9. So how can I optimize this? So if I run RGA, so this is the receiver gain is gonna be calculated based on my um, current um, power level for pressaturation, okay? Uh, another thing that's quite important, you see like my offset is centered on 4.7, that's because I wanna resaturate the water. Okay, and the chemical sheet for water uh, in water D2O is 4.7. So RG8 is pretty low compared to like the maximum is uh, 203. So I'm gonna run GS and I'm gonna optimize this, uh, this pulse power. So PLW, uh, PLDB9, okay. So this is like quite important for ZGB, ZGPR. This is the uh, the power level that I have to optimize. And I always optimize in decibels, never in watts because the changing one watts is a lot, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I already know from my experiment experience on this spectrometer that this power is gonna be close to 40, okay, dBs. So you see like that's getting, uh, it's getting better. I can either look at my FID and I can also see my FID area, okay? Because uh, why my FID area? Because the main source uh, of, um, the main contribution to my FID area comes from the water signal or the or water peak, okay? So one thing that I also know um, that I can also do, sorry, is that I can also do like, I can try a little bit more uh, you gotta be careful not to like go extremely high because it's like remember this is continuous the pulsing during the D1 and during one or two seconds, depending on what uh you pick as your D1. So you see, like actually it's not improving anymore. I'm gonna go a little bit back 
You can also change the offset, like see if you can optimize uh, better, like you see at 4.7, you can try to go like a little bit um, like 4.701 or something like this. And you can see if it gets better or worse. Okay, in this case, it got like a little bit better. What I'm gonna do, we're gonna save and stop and okay. Yeah, okay. So this is now saved here and I can just run my experiment. But before that, sorry, uh, we have to run rerun a G RGA, okay? So now I'm gonna run like the, the calculated receiver gain based on this uh, this power uh, for saturation like 39 and not 44 anymore. Any, any, anymore. So it increased to 50.8. It's not ideal, but it's much better than eight, okay? So another experiment that we can also do is um, ZGESGP that I had uh, already loaded here, okay? So this is another pulse sequence. This pulse sequence is a little bit different in a way that, um, in a way that uh, this this pulse sequence uses selective pulses on, 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 on flavor for solvent suppression. So I ran get prosol to get like my power so now I can run like get prosol. Remember, I calculate my hard pulse as 9.45 minus 9.38 EBs. That is my power level for the hard pulse. So I can optimize this. And then what I'm gonna do is like, uh, so my RG is set to 32. I'm gonna decrease this because it's a protein. So I'm gonna try and see how what I'm gonna get for RGA. And then we're gonna look, I'm uh, gonna run GS. And uh, so, okay, that's pretty good. For example, our, um, GS is set to maximum. So that's really good. Uh, we can look at the signal, seems okay. Um, so let's say that uh, it wasn't okay. So how can I optimize that uh, the, the power level for that pulse, selective pulse. So at the in the on the pulse sequence you're gonna see that SPDB1, this is the this is the power correlated to the, the selective pulse. So for example if I do it like let's say that was like this, okay? So that was definitely not ideal, right? Really bad. So what I can do like it's just like change one by one like I change and I wait. So I see that uh for example the feed area let's say let's see if it's, it's getting it's going to decrease or increase so yeah we're not seeing everything so i'm going to decrease this just so you can see both uh the x and y so see it's uh it's getting better so and then we increase this to see how close we are like how good we we are of the ideal. Okay, so that's good. So we can also like, you can also play with the offset, like see if we get a better water suppression or not, uh, playing with the offset. So in this case, it seems like not to be affected by save and stop. So, okay, and you can actually check here. Uh, so this is, so you see here, like F1, 180 poles, uh, so 180 degree pole, uh, shaped poles. It doesn't say that this pulse is in, in the water, but um, this is the shaped pulse um, power. So this is SPW1. So we are gonna change SPDB1. Remember always change um, the value in dB, not in uh, watts. Uh, so let's just show you like one thing, like. If we change one, so you see like dB is zero. If you go to two, dB is minus three. But we have like 26.51. If we change to 27.51, just pay attention how like just minimal change on the watt, like the value in watts. So you see it's still milliwatts. So, and this pulse, like it's a selective pulse, it's two millisecond pulse. So that it comes with a lower power. Okay, so 
these are the two pulse sequence that I wanted to present today. And uh, always good to check um, if the gradients are okay. So you remember have the file, the numbers here uh, and the files here. If you don't, like if you have a uh, top shin, sorry, top spin 3.5 uh, pet level seven and above you can run GPPP like this. I have uh, in this computer 3.5 path level five, so it's not implemented, but if you run this, what you do is just uh, updates all these uh, gradient values, okay? So everything's fine, offsets in the water. I, I adjusted the pulse, my RG is at maximum, my number of points is uh, set as optimum for what for a protein. This is like, um, you, you don't need a lot of points um, because the FID dies really quickly. Uh, one important thing on this pulse sequence that we didn't have on the DG, ZGPR yet is that there is a minimal number of scans. So this is eight times N, where N is one, two, three, four, whatever. So let's say I have a protein, I know that it's quite diluted. So I wanna go up. How can I do that? Well, I can do like, for example, things like this, 20 times eight, so 160. Um, let me see, say 600, is 600 divided by eight? Oh yeah, it's fine, so it's fine. So I can just multiply things like eight by uh, eight, and then I do 640 or our 2K, 6K, whatever. Okay, so this uh, this is what I wanted to present this uh, uh, today. And this has to be respect based on the phase cycling. Thank you for watching this video. And I hope, I helped you to um, set your water suppression uh, experiment. See you next time.